out now on video. The Great Noddy Video. Five new adventures with Noddy and all his friends in Toy Town. And nursery rhyme time. All the king's rhymes, they're gone. 60 favourite nursery rhymes that kids will love to sing along to. Wheels on the bus go round and round. And follow the story as Jack searches for the missing rhymes. Two great new children's videos from the BBC. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be not bring letters through your door. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It is breakfast time in Greendale. If you knock on Pat's door and go in, you'll see Sarah bustling about. Julian, it's time you were off. Pat is finishing his breakfast. Time I was off too. Julian is getting ready for school. Right, off you go. Bye, Mum. Bye. Jess, have you seen my hat? Where did I put it? Ah, there it is. Time we were off. It's not our usual day today, Jess. Bye, Sarah. Bye, Pat. Good luck. Hold on tight, Jess. Off we go. Sam Waldron's out early, too. Morning, Sam. Morning, Pat. Where's your van, Pat? Can't stop. Taking the bus. A bus? What's he on about? Major Forbes has spotted the new notice in the post office window. Dashed good idea, what? It'll be extra work for Pat, though, said Mrs. Pottage. Morning, everybody. Morning, Pat. Hello, Jess. Come on, Katie. Time for school. Bye, Pat. Bye, Katie. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. We're ready to go. Hope you've got the keys safely. Oh, yes, Pat. And a fine morning to you, too. Here they are. Oh, thanks very much. This is exciting. I'll pop back in for the letters when I've got her warmed up. I left it down the next street, out of the way. Somewhere round this corner. Ah, there she is. I wonder why Pat has left his van round the corner. Here he comes. What's this? It's not his usual van. It's new. It's a Royal Mail post bus.
You are going to be busy, Pat, now that you're to pick up passengers as well as deliver and collect the mail. I know. Granny Dryden wants a ride into Ingledale to do her shopping. Oh, that reminds me. You'd best see if the Reverend wants a lift. His whole car broke down on Wednesday. I'll not forget. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. The post bus stops outside the church. The Reverend Tims didn't seem to be ready. Pat had some letters for him. Oh, Pat, I wanted to go into Ingledale on your lovely new post bus today, but oh dear, I found these knots in my handkerchief, and I know they're to remind me about something, but bless me, I cannot think what it is. Well, Reverend, I won't be able to keep my passengers waiting. I'll have to be on my way. Uh, don't wait for me, Pat. I'll get the old bicycle out, if I remember in time. Well, here's your mail anyway. Goodbye, Reverend. Bye, Pat. Off he went to the next stop. Granny Dryden was ready and waiting for Pat, with her stick and shopping bag. The door's on the other side, Granny Dryden. Well, Pat, this is summit new. What a lovely way to go shopping. Mind the step. Oh! Whoops-a-daisy! Pat was feeling quite excited, now that he had his first passenger. Off we go, Jess. Oh, Pat, stop, I've forgotten me act. Oh, dear. Back we go. I won't be long. I knew I'd forget Summit. I wonder if we'll ever get to Ingledale, Jess. Ah, here she comes. It was a lovely hat. A pity to leave it behind. All aboard! I just hope she hasn't forgotten anything else. I think we have another passenger, Jess. Miss Hubbard must have a lot of shopping to do. Stop! Stop, stop! Thank you, Pat. If you could pass me a bag or two. Certainly, Miss Hubbard. Pat helps with the shopping baskets and carrier bags. It was a struggle to fit everything in. Thank you, Pat. Good morning, Granny Dryden. All safe and sound. At last, they were able to move off. There's Ted Glenn waiting by his workshop. What's he up to? He usually goes into town in his Land Rover. I'll ride into Ingledale with you, Pat. I need a new gearbox for the Land Rover. Oh, Ted, do look where you're putting your big feet. Sorry, Miss Hubbard. I didn't see your old basket there. It isn't an old basket, Ted, though it looks it after being stuck on your foot. It used to be a lot quieter carrying letters and parcels, didn't it, Jess? They went on their way at last. Over the hills. Round to the right. And along bumpy country lanes. Round to the left. Was Pat trying to catch up on lost time? Oh, slow down, Pat. 
You're making me all wobbly. Now what? Pat had to slow down because of Sam Waldron's mobile shop. It was a tight squeeze. Come on, Pat. Left hand down a bit. Take it slowly, or you'll scratch in your post, boss. Pat, how about a little light refreshment? I'm sure Sam has something we can buy. Yes, a biscuit would be nice. It seemed a good idea. Can I give you one, Miss Hubbard? Oh, thank you, Ted. Pat decided to check a nearby letterbox. He found two letters. You'll all be spent up before you get to Ingledale, said Pat. And we really should be on our way. I have the letters to deliver as well as you, you know. I haven't finished me biscuits. Take them with you. Mind the step, Granny Dryden. After you, Miss Hubbard. Bye, Pat. And thanks. Have we left any behind, Jess? That's one thing about letters. They never get out for a biscuit. He passes by Garner Hall. Hello, Pat. Good luck, old fellow. Oh dear, what now? What's B.C. Selby doing? Stop! Stop! Sorry, Pet. You can't go this way. The old bridge isn't safe. It's all this rain. These floods are dreadful. Oh dear, and we're running late as well. I know a shortcut. Just go straight on this way. Thanks, PC Selby. Sorry about the bother, Pat. Then left, past the signpost. Down here. Don't worry, you'll be all right. Don't worry, he says. Feels like a ploughed field. Watch the gate. Just enough room. I hope Ted knows what he's doing. I knew it. We're lost. You don't know which way from t'other, young Ted. That's not fair. I've been this way dozens of times. It looks a bit different today, that's all. Oh. 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 Now where? We're lost. There was only one way to go. Oh, please, ride me over. I know where we are. This is the road to Thompson Ground. There were letters to deliver. And Alf was waiting to see the new post bus. Hello, Pat! Usual delivery, Alf. Thank you, Ted. Hello, Dot. Hello, Ted. Hello, Miss Hubbard. Granny Dryden was asleep. She woke up. <laughs> Where are we? Uh, are we there? Where's the market? Ted was looking at Alf's tractor. It just won't come off. It will. Well, she told me. Lord save us. Look out. Ah, oh heavens. Ouch. Was that the Reverend? Let's go and see. You all right, Reverend? What a ride! Thank the Lord, Alf, that you have hay in your barn. Oh, but I remember now. 
That's what the knots were for. One, to remember my sister's birthday. Two, to remember to post her present. And three, said Pat, to get new brakes for my bicycle. Why don't you go to town in the post bus? And I'll mend your bike for you. I'll bring it round to the vicarage tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Alf. Time we were on our way, said Pat. All aboard. I think I'll sit in front with Jess. I'm sure he won't mind. Next stop, Ingledale. Ingledale at last. Everybody back here, please, at two o'clock. We'll not be late, said Miss Hubbard. But when two o'clock came, Granny Dryden was missing. We can't go without her, said Pat. I'll go and look for her, said Miss Hubbard. She'll be in the market, getting potatoes. I wonder where she's got to. She'll be having a good gossip somewhere. Oh, there you are. Have you seen Miss Hubbard? She's looking for you. Looking for me? Said Granny Dryden. I wasn't lost. I'll tell you what. You sit in the bus, and I'll go and look for Miss Hubbard. No sooner had Ted gone than Miss Hubbard came back. Oh, I can't find Granny Dryden anywhere, she said. I think we'll have to report her missing. Oh, there she is in the bus. How did she get there? Well, you see... And where's Ted gone? Looking for you. Oh, but I'm not lost. I know you're not lost, but... Oh, never mind. We'll just have to wait. And I don't know when we're going to get back to Greendale. I think I'll sit in the bus and read my paper. But Ted soon came back, and they set off home again. There were letters and a parcel to take to George Lancaster at Intake Farm. George was collecting the eggs. Hey, there's Pat! Hello, George. Hello, Pat. I like your new post bus. It's a great idea. Do you think I could take a dozen ends to the market in it tomorrow? Indeed not, said Miss Hubbard. Just think of the feathers. We'd all be sneezing for a week. Oh, but what lovely eggs. May I buy half a dozen, please? I forgot to get some at the market. There you are, six lovely fresh eggs, Miss Hubbard. Thank you, George. Mind you, don't break them. It was soon time to be on their way. Bye, Pat. There's Dorothy waving from her gate. What can be the matter? Oh, Pat, she said. Mrs Goggins has been on the phone. She's ever so worried. She's wondering where you've all got to. Thinks you've had an accident with a new post bus. Why not come in and give her a ring? Dorothy. You're welcome. You must be parched after your trip. 
Most kind. Oh, Mrs. Goggins does worry so. Hello, Mrs. Goggins. Yes. No, we haven't been to Blackpool, just Ingledale. All safe and sound. We'll be back soon. Goodbye. What a time we've had. It's a wonder Pat managed to get us all home again. Now, don't you worry about your old bike, Reverend. I've given it a good oiling. It's as good as new. It just needs some new brake pads. I'll pop round with it tomorrow. More tea, Granny Dryden? Well, just one more cup. There was a saucer of milk for Jess. Come on, everybody. Time to be off. Hang on, Pat. I'll help you turn in the yard. Back you come. Uh, come on. Careful, stop! Right, off you go. It had been a long day. The next stop was at Miss Hubbard's cottage. Here we are, Miss Hubbard, your stop. Just a minute, Pat. Mustn't forget anything. Careful as you get out. Mind the step. Pat. Goodbye. Then it was Granny Dryden's turn. Here, let me give you a hand down, Granny Dryden. Uh, thanks, Pat. Me hat! I've lost me hat! Here it is. Looks as though she's been sitting on it. Thanks, Ted. I'll see you to your door, Granny Dryden. Bye, Ted. Bye, Pat. The last stop before home was at the church. Thank you. My goodness, it's been quite a day. Oh, Pat, I still have a knot in my handkerchief. Now then, Reverend, said Pat, is it a new one or just one that you forgot to undo? I've forgotten, said the Reverend. Oh, dear. Goodbye, Pat. Time we remembered to go home, Jess. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, boom. Bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows. 
his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. There was deep snow in Greendale. Peter Fogg was busy clearing the roads. Nobody could get about until he had shifted the snow. Postman Pat, and Sam Waldron, <laughs> and Miss Hubbard followed in Peter's tracks. The Reverend Timms was clearing his path. He waved to Pat as he slowly went by. Keep my seat warm, Jess. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Isn't this snow awful? It's a good thing Peter Fogg's clearing some of the roads. We'd never have got through without him. They do say there's ten-foot drifts up at Intake Farm, Pat. And here's an urgent parcel for George, up at Hill Top. You'll never get there today, you know. Oh, dear. But I'd better take it just in case. I, I usually manage somehow. Well, mind how you go, Pat. We don't want you getting buried in the snow. Oh, I'll be all right. Cheerio. We can always dig ourselves out, can't we, Jess, if we get stuck? Pat was on his way. He had to drive carefully along the slippery roads. At Greendale Farm, the twins were waiting for him. Oh! Who threw that? You little monkeys. Two can play at that game. Hey! What's going on? Oh, dear. Sorry, Mr. Thompson. I didn't know you were here. I, I was aiming at the twins. That's all right, Pat. It's only a bit of fun. You're just in time, because the road's blocked and the snowplow stuck in a big drift. We've come to dig it out. You could give us a hand. OK. I can't get on with my round anyway till the road's clear. I'll just give Mrs. Pottage her letters first. The snow's bad this year, Mrs. Pottage. Well, <laughs> the twins are enjoying it. <laughs> yes, so I've discovered. Bye, Pat. Peter Fogg was already digging when they got to the snowplow. Here we are, Ted. This is the spot. Whoops. Don't worry, Peter. We'll have you out in no time. Thank goodness for that. Phew, it's warm work, I can tell you. Come on, lads, put your backs into it. Hang on, I'll 
I'll see if I can get through now. He took a run at the snowdrift. Come on, Pete, you can do it. He was through. The twins had been busy. Bye. Bye, Pat. Bye. stopped at the vicarage with a letter for the Reverend Timms. But Dr Gilbertson came to the door instead. Come in, Pat. The poor Reverend slipped on the ice and broke in his leg. Oh, dear. That is bad news. Hello, Pat. Just look at this. Isn't it stupid? A piece of bad luck, I'd say, Reverend. But I've brought a letter to cheer you up. Ah, yes, from Cousin Sylvia. That'll make good reading. Oh, but what about the parish magazine? I was going to take it round today. I can take it with my letters, said Pat. No trouble at all. I'll see they get through. Cheerio, Reverend. Thompson ground, Dorothy Thompson was out collecting the eggs. I hope you haven't any letters for Hilltop, she said. The snow's so bad that Peter had to turn back. The plough just couldn't get up the hill. Hmm, I've got a parcel for George marked urgent. What can I do? Perhaps I could walk it. I've got a better idea. We can use the old farm sledge. I've got to take some food up for the sheep. Well, it's a long time since I was on a sledge. But it looks like the only way of getting the parcel there. Here we are, said Alf. You'd better take George some groceries, said Dorothy. He might be running short being snowed up like this. They loaded up the sledge. Off they went. It was hard going uphill, <laughs> but lovely downhill.
The sheep were glad to see them. Just look at that drift. George's house was nearly buried. Hello? Anybody in? George was out. He'd gone to feed his sheep. So Pat left the food and the parcel on the table. We'll have a fast ride downhill, said Alf. Give us a push. Hold on, here we go. Hold on, Pat. Help. Oh, 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 oh dear. You all right, Pat? All in one piece, I think. Hold tight. Hey! Mind that tree. Whoa! Ho, 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 ho! Hey! My goodness. <laughs> That's one way of delivering a parcel. We'll need a hot drink after that, said Alf. Here we are, all ready for you. Jess was glad he'd stayed by the warm fire. Thanks, Mrs. Thompson. Just what I need. Aye, there's no like a good cup of tea. Thanks for the ride. Goodbye. The rest of Pat's round was in the valley, and the roads had been cleared and gritted by now. No more digging or sledging today, said Pat. It takes more than snow to stop us, Jess. in his van Postman Pat Postman Pat Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Everybody knows his bright red van All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure There'll be knock, ring, letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat And his black and white cat All the birds are singing And the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man He's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. One morning.
morning, Miss Hubbard, who was always up bright and early, was surprised to see Pat's van still outside his house. Goodness me, Pat should be away by now. I wonder what's wrong. Pat, are you there? Pat! Pat! Gooeep! You! Pat, it's late! Ah, there you are! Still in bed, Pat? What about the post? Oh dear, is it that late? I must have overslept. Wretched alarm clock. Morning, Pat. Must go or I'll be late as well. Pat rushed out without any breakfast. I'd better get my skates on. They'll all wonder where I've got to. Oh, no. My hat. Come on, Jess. Don't just sit there. playing at, Jess? Do you think you're Postman Jess or something? Come on, let's get moving. What a start to the day. That alarm clock couldn't have gone off. We're over an hour late already. It was past nine o'clock at the post office. I wonder why Pat is so late, said Mrs. Goggins. Anyway, it gives me time to repair this parcel. Is that him? Oh! It's not my day today, is it? Good morning, Mrs. Goggins. Sorry I'm late. It's that alarm clock. Didn't go off, you know. As bad as this parcel. Just look at it. I do wish people would wrap them up properly. This is a right old mess. Can I help? Oh, my hat. This stuff sticks to everything. Gosh, it's all over my fingers. Ooh, yuck. That's really sticky. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh. oh, dear. You're as bad as me today. All thumbs. There you are. I think it will hold. It's just one of those days, said Pat. Thank you. Wish me luck. I need it today. Ted. That messy parcel is for him. We'll give it to him before it falls to bits. Hi, Ted. Got a parcel for you. Ted! Oh, hello, Pat. Is that my parcel? It'll be those spare parts I ordered. Whoops! Oh, no! Dozens of nuts and bolts, cogs and screws rolled away into the grass. Oh, dear. I'll never find them all. Not in this long grass. Hold on. I'll give you a hand. That's one bit. But what about all the others? Bill Thompson had just set out from home on his way to the village when he saw Pat and Ted searching for something in the grass. Have you lost something? He said. Yes, a lot of nuts and bolts. I've got just the thing for that at home. 
I'll go and get it. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> we'll still be here, said Ted. What's he on about, said Pat. <laughs> Search me. Is this one of them? Mm, no, looks like a rusty nail. <laughs> like this. Rubbish. We're getting nowhere. I know. Look, the lad's back already. And he's got a magnet with him. <laughs> Hope it's a good one or it won't be much use. Have you found much? said Bill. Well, no, not yet. This is really powerful. Picks up anything metal. You have a try. Oh, thanks. It started to pick up all the metal bits from the grass, as well as Pat's glasses. Over here, said Ted. I hope they're all there, said Pat. I'll count them, said Ted. Thanks, Pat. Cheerio. Dunno, Pat. Thanks for your help. Here's another bit. Thanks, Bill. That magnet came in handy. <laughs> What a day, said Pat to Jess. We'll never get through at this rate. His next stop was Thompson Ground. Alf was busy mending the barn wall. Morning, Alf. Sorry I'm late. Got some letters for you. Just leave them on the table. Dorothy's away feeding the chickens. Nothing urgent, is there? No, just a few bills. Oops! Hey, up, what are you doing? Sorry, Alf. Hang on. Hold it steady! Not that way, the other way. I said the other way! Oh! Ouch! Oh, my hand. Oh, it does hurt. Ah. Oh, gosh, that's painful. You all right, Pat? Oh, dear. Well, don't move. I'll go and get something for it. Just then, Mrs. Thompson came back from feeding the chickens. Dear me, whatever have you been up to, Pat? Not looking where I was going, I'm afraid. Walking into ladders. You mustn't make it a habit. Now hold still and I'll bind it up for you. But you won't be able to drive today, you know. You'll have to rest it. Thanks, but what about all my letters? Said Pat. Just then, Sam Waldron drove his mobile shop into the farmyard. He noticed Pat's bandaged hand. Hello, what happened to you? They told him about Pat's accident and that he was unable to drive. Why don't we put your letters and parcels in my van, said Sam. We can do our rounds together. Yes, and then the post will get through after all, said Pat. Thanks, Sam, that's a marvellous idea. Come on, Jess, you'll be all right in there. Thanks, Alf. That's the lot now. Bye. We'd better get Dr. Gilbertson to take a look at that wrist, said Sam. It was their first stop anyway. Won't be long. Hello, Pat. 
Pat. Goodness me, what have you been doing? It's my wrist. Come on in. Let's have a look at it. Ouch! Is this where it hurts? Ouch! Ah, well, it's not broken. You'll be all right in a day or two. I'll just give you something to soothe it. You'll soon be able to drive. Oh, thanks, Doctor. Cheerio. Bye. No need to worry. Nothing broken. For twice a week there comes a mobile shop up to the valley. And folks are delighted when he comes around For it always will save a long journey to town From the valley, the valley He's always on time as he rings out his chime In the valley, valley. Mothers can plan with a great shopping list if he cut out his service, oh, he'd be terribly missed In the valley, the valley What the people will want in the valley. valley He buys in the town Then he takes things around All his customers know that he won't let them down In the valley, the valley Thanks for the lift, Sam. It's been a funny old day, but tomorrow, well, tomorrow's another day. That's the stuff, Pat. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knocked. Bring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. They were having a busy summer in Greendale. Alf Thompson was getting the hay in. He could just about manage to squeeze between the houses with his load. 
But then he wasn't counting on something of a traffic jam in the middle of the village. Pat had left his van outside the post office, and someone had left a lorry on the other side of the road. It's a job getting through. Steady does it. How's it doing on the other side? Oh dear, oh dear. Oops. I'll have to back up. Right, here we go again. It looks as though Alf is stuck. I wonder who the lorry belongs to. Whew. A right mess I've got myself into. That sounds like Miss Hubbard. She'll soon sort things out. Stop! You'll have to stop, Miss Hubbard. Oh, what's this, Alf? How am I to get through if you block the road with your tractor? I'm stuck, Miss Hubbard. Between Pat's van and this lorry. Well, we can't wait here all day. Where is Pat? Pat? What's to do? said Mrs Goggins. Don't take on now. Pat'll be back in a minute when he's done the village letters. It's this lorry, said Miss Hubbard. Who's left it here? There's no sign of a driver. What's going on? said Peter Fogg. Has there been a crash? There will be if this lorry isn't moved, said Miss Hubbard. It looks like a builder's lorry. What's it doing in the village? Does that mean we'll have to wait around? I certainly hope not. Pat should be back soon. We need P.C. Selby. Here is P.C. Selby. Now then, now then. What's all this? What's going on? You can't block the road like this, you know. Alf Thompson's stuck. It's not my fault, it's this lorry. And Pat's van. They all talked at not once. Right, what a mix-up. Wait a minute, here. wait a minute. Now then. Here, this headlight's broken. Now then, let's get things sorted out. Who does this lorry belong to? Pat was hurrying round the village with his letters. Pat! Who's that calling? Oh, it's Sarah, Pat's wife. Must be your forgetting day, Pat. You went off without your sandwiches. Here we are. Special delivery. Just like a parcel, said Pat. I'd better not pop them in somebody's letterbox by mistake. <laughs> You'll be hungry if you do. Bye. Bye, and thanks. Left a bit. They no. still hadn't sorted now, the traffic to jam your right. Out. Stop. Left again. Now, a little to your right. Straight now. Straight. Stop. That's it. All over now. Left, he says, then right. Wish he'd make up his mind. Keep to your right. Back up a little. No, back again. Come straight on. Uh, you'll never get through there, you know. Alf, stop! Oh, over to the left! Mind the Come van! On, Alf. Oh, dear. Stop! Back up a little. Then hard down on your left. Stop! You'll have to go back again. Now, hard over to your left. No! Ho, ho, what have we here? You can't leave the place five minutes and look at it. Back a little. Now, now hard over to your... Oops! Mind the van! No, no, right! Right, I've You've got me all of a muzzle. I'm staying put till somebody moves that lorry. Hang on, said Ted. I'll give you a hand. Ted's lorry? So sorry, everyone, said Major Forbes. Ted's just giving me a hand at the hall. Borrowed the lorry. First traffic jam in Greendale, what? Soon be off. Morning, everybody. Just a word, Pat. Urgent parcel coming from London. Bought these tin soldiers for my collection. Now take good care of it, there's a good chap, what? Don't you worry, Major, said Pat. I'll see you get it safe and sound, the way you always do. Good man.
Bye for now. Bye. You see, you see, Selby, it's quite easy when you know how. At last, Alf could get on his way. Miss Hubbard decided she had wasted enough time and moved off. Whilst Peter Fogg started up his motorbike again. Leaving PC Selby and Jess with the road to themselves. Pat was helping Mrs Goggins to sort the rest of the letters and parcels. There were two parcels with no address. Mrs Goggins found a label that had come unstuck. Oh, it's this modern glue, said Mrs Goggins. They're forever dropping off. Now, which one shall I put it on? I think it's off that one, said Pat. But that leaves one without an address, said Mrs Goggins. Don't worry, said Pat. As soon as somebody says, where's my parcel, I'll know it must be theirs. Simple. Oh, I'd never have thought of that. Goodbye, Pat. Mind how you go. Bye. Now then, Jess, we'd better take the Major's parcel first. It's something special. Toy soldiers. Pat was on his way. Pat arrives at Garner Hall. Won't be long, Jess. Looks as though the Major's busy. I could have sworn the bell was working. Whoops. Uh, anybody in? Hello? Major? Major Forbes? Uh, anyone at home? I'll leave the parcel here. It'll be quite safe. What's that? <laughs> Must be me imagining things. Where is everybody? They must be having a tea break. Pat was on his way. That's just the place for a quiet picnic, Jess. Under that tree. Under that tree will do nicely. Whew, that was a warm climb, but it was worth it. Now, let's see. Tuck in, Jess. There's nothing like a quiet picnic. This is a funny sandwich. Oh, no. It's the Major's toy soldiers. How did they get into my lunch? Oh, what a noodle I am. I've got the wrong parcel. I must have left my sandwiches on the hall table in the Major's house. It was this parcel that the address fell off. 
Come on, Jess. Back to the Majors. He'll be thinking his soldiers have run away. Down at Garner Hall, the Reverend Timms was trying to cheer the Major up, and P.C. Selby was looking for footprints. Anything the matter? asked Pat. What's going on? Robbery, said the Major. That's what's going on, Pat. My collection of soldiers, gone, all gone, what? Marched off without a sound. But there's a funny thing, the robbers left their sandwiches behind. Oh, no, said Pat. They were my sandwiches. You see, I muddled the parcels up, my sandwiches and your soldiers. I left my sandwiches on your hall table and your parcel of soldiers was still in my bag. And here it is. Pat, you're a genius, said the Major. You've saved my new soldiers from the robbers, what? The best of the bunch, too. Good man. But I'm still hungry, said Pat. The Lord will provide, said the Reverend Timms. I'll just pop in for my sandwiches. Now then, Pat, said P.C. Selby, I'll have to ask you for a statement. You can't go in there, Pat. Not till we've looked for fingerprints. But I want my sandwiches, said Pat. Those sandwiches are evidence, said P.C. Selby. Evidence, Pat, that's what they are. Nobody can touch them, not till the CID get here from Pencaster. And goodness knows when that'll be. I wonder if Sarah's got something nice for lunch, said Pat. I'm so hungry, Jess. I think we'll have to pop home and see. Bye. Bye, old chap. Bye, Pat. Home sweet home. Hello, anyone at home? It's me. Oh, you've never lost your sandwiches after all, have you? Said Sarah. Not lost, said Pat, but they're evidence now. Oh, well, I never. And Pat had to tell her the whole story of the robbery at Garner Hall. Jess was too busy to listen. I'll have to be on my way, said Pat. There are still lots of letters to be delivered. Mm. Robbery or no robbery. Now you'll be passing the school just about the right time to pick young Julian up, said Sarah. Save me a trip. All right, I'll not forget. Bye for now. Come on, Jess. We haven't finished yet. In you get. Pat was on his way again. happened to Peter Fall. Hello, Pat. Having trouble? I certainly am. My front wheel brakes have locked. Nearly threw me over the handlebars. I'll ask Ted Glenn to pop along with his toolkit. Here's something to read while you're waiting. Oh, good. It's my motorbike magazine. Great. Bye, Pat, and thanks. Pat called at Thompson Ground. Alf was helping Ted load some wood onto the lorry. Hello, Pat. Pat had some letters for Alf. Come and have a cuppa, said Alf. Dorothy's sure to have the kettle on. He was right. 
just the job. Hello, Pat. What's all this about a robbery at the hall? said Alf. Pat had to tell the whole story again from the beginning. Oh, said Pat, I nearly forgot with all this talk about the robbery. Peter Fogg's stuck with his motorbike. He's broken down, about two miles back. Do you think you could give him a hand, Ted? No trouble. I'll pick him up when we've got this wood loaded. Thanks for the tea, said Pat. Goodbye. Bye, Pat. Bye. Pat's next stop was at Intake Farm. He met P.C. Selby coming out. Any news of the robbery? asked Pat. Good news and bad news, said P.C. Selby. They caught the robbers on the road to Pencaster, but there's no sign of the collection of toy soldiers. Bye for now. Cheerio, Pat. There was a newspaper for George Lancaster. Pat set out to find him. But where had he got to? Looking for me, Pat. Ooh. You made me jump, George. I thought the robbers were after me. Here's your Hen Farmer's Weekly. Oh, thanks, Pat. Then George told Pat how he dreamt he was being chased by a giant hen, which flew away just before he woke up. It's time I was flying away, said Pat. I'm supposed to be collecting young Julian from school. Now, where has that cat got to? He might be after rabbits down the field, said George. He likes my rabbits, does your Jess? They went to look. Jess! 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 He sometimes comes round here. No sign of him, though. Jess! Jess! Pat found Jess with his rear end sticking out of a rabbit hole. Here he is, George. I think he's got himself stuck. Pat took hold of his cat as gently as possible and pulled. Something small and heavy rolled into the grass. George picked it up and looked at it. What's Jess found? said Pat. Looks like one of these old tin soldiers, said George. I used to have a box full when I was a lad. Could do with a bit of a clean. Did you say a tin soldier? Said Pat. Yes, why? The robbery. You must have heard. Hang on. Pat thrust his arm down the rabbit hole as far as it would go and brought out a shopping bag. He looked inside and found it full of toy soldiers. Jess has found the loot, said Pat. The robbers must have hidden them on their way to Pencaster. They must have passed your gate. Clever cut, said George. I must get these back to the Major, said Pat. He will be pleased. Keep an eye on these, Jess. Bye, Pat. Bye. Never mind, Jess. The Major will be so pleased to have his soldiers back. I'm sure he'll give you something nice. Pat remembered to pick Julian up from school. Am I late? Huh, not much, Dad. Mm. 
On the way, he told Julian all about the robbery and how Jess had found the soldiers down a rabbit hole. Garner Hall at last. Ted and the Major were still busy with the roof. What's the fellow doing here again, eh, what? Special delivery, Major. What? In a scruffy plastic bag? Bless my eyes, it's my soldiers! My precious soldiers! Thank you, Pat, you're a stout fellow. And Pat told the whole story yet again. But it was Jess that found them, said Julian. Wasn't it? It's a good place to hide something, said Ted. Down a rabbit hole. Now who'd think of looking there? We'd better be off home, said Pat. Sarah will think we've got lost. Take this with you, said Ted. And make sure you look at page two. Uh, thanks, Ted. I will. I don't know why Ted wants me to read the paper, said Pat. Bye. Bye, Pat, and thanks again. Julian couldn't wait to see what it was. Oh, it's about a reward. For anyone who finds the major soldiers, 500 pounds. Well, I never, said Pat. That'd buy a lot of fish for Jess. It's time to go home and tell Sarah all our news. Let me tell her first. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, 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 Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man Everybody knows his bright red van All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure There'll be knock ring letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man It was a special day for Pat, but he was keeping it a secret. Now then, Jess, don't you give my secret away. Mrs. Goggins was looking out for Pat. She was very pleased about something. Hello, Pat, she said. There's a lot of post today. Pat didn't look too happy until he saw that most of it was for him. But who could be writing to Pat? One envelope had a drawing of a cat on it, and the writing looked very much like Katie Pottage's. Why don't you open them? Then you'll know who sent them. So Pat did. 
What a surprise. They were all birthday cards. He stood them in a row along the counter. There was one from every person on his round. That was nice. But how did everyone know it was his birthday today? He'd kept it a secret all these years, and now they all knew. Funny. How on earth they found out, I couldn't say. But let me wish you a happy birthday too, and many happy returns. Pat bought six chocolate kittens. Then gathered up all his cards and letters and went on his way. At Greendale Farm, the twins were looking out for Pat. Happy birthday, Pat, they said as he came in with the post. Mm, thank you. Mrs. Pottage had just come in from the kitchen. Happy birthday, she said. Pat showed the twins his cards. We've made you a cake. How did you know it was my birthday? said Pat. We're not telling, said Mrs. Pottage. It's a secret. <laughs> it was a secret, said Pat with a laugh. Here's a sugar mouse for Jess, said Tom. Thank you very much. Now let me see. Have I got everything? Cake, mouse, cards. Goodbye. <coughs> Jess spotted the mouse. He thought he'd catch it before it got lost. <coughs> no, said Pat. Save it for tea time. It won't run away. But Jess wasn't so sure. Hello, Reverend. A letter for you. Oh, thank you. Mm, been expecting this. And here's something for you to greet you on your birthday. Thank you, said Pat. It was a leather-bound Bible. Oh, thank you. But how did you know? He who reads shall learn. Very kind of you. Goodbye. Godspeed. There were some letters for Thompson Ground. Come in. Pat arrived just in time for a cup of tea. Thank you. Oh, your letter.
Alf Thompson came in. Hello, Pat, he said. Happy birthday. He gave him a walking stick with a handle made from a sheep's horn. He'd made it himself. That'll be good for keeping dogs off. Thanks, said Pat. But how did you know it was my birthday? Oh, you'll have to find that out for yourself. Just keep your eyes open, said Alf, smiling. You're quite a famous postman, you know. Whatever does he mean, thought Pat. He was getting more and more puzzled, and his van was filling up with presents. Jess didn't like the stick. He thought the horn might butt him when he wasn't looking. Granny Dryden was busy cooking when Pat arrived with the letters. He'd brought her groceries too, as the mobile shop couldn't get up the lane to her cottage. Morning! Post! Granny Dryden had knitted something for Pat's birthday. Whatever was it? A woolly vest. It'll keep you warm in the winter, said Granny Dryden. <laughs> it looked very itchy. But Pat said, thank you, it's, it's just the right size. How did you know it was my birthday? Eh? I can't hear a word you say, said Granny Dryden. I need a new battery in my hearing aid. Uh, I'll bring you one tomorrow, said Pat. Goodbye. At Miss Hubbard's cottage, there was a glass of fruit juice waiting for Pat. There were two letters for her. Miss Hubbard drank his health and wished him a happy birthday. Cheers. She gave him a steering wheel cover made of red velvet. Thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> she didn't tell him how she knew it was his birthday. Goodbye. <laughs> At Intake Farm, George Lancaster showed Pat his special prize hens. They look champion, said Pat. They are, they're champion layers, said George. Just look at that. He gave him two dozen for his birthday and a dozen for the village school. Thanks for the eggs, George. Then Sam Waldron arrived and gave Pat a punnet of strawberries and a carton of double cream for his birthday tea. Thank you, Sam. Lucy was on the lookout for Pat at the village school. The children had made a picture of him on a big sheet of card with Happy Birthday written underneath and all their names. They'd also made a model of his van, but they wouldn't tell him how they knew it was his birthday. Pat had presents for them, a chocolate kitten each, and the eggs from George Lancaster. Goodbye.
The day's round was nearly finished. Pat was just looking to see if there were any letters to collect when Peter Fogg came along on his tractor. He stopped to wish Pat a happy birthday. Pat told him how everyone seemed to know about it. <laughs> Don't you know why? said Peter Fogg, laughing. I wish I did, said Pat. Peter showed him a newspaper. It was this week's Pencaster Gazette. Have a look at this, he said. Pat was amazed. There was an article about him, headed Postman of the Year. It told all about his work, how he helped everyone, where he was born, and the date of his birthday. Well, said Pat, how did they find all that out? Keep it as a souvenir, said Peter. Thanks, said Pat. I'll show it to the wife. <laughs> she will be pleased. All right, Jess, I'm coming. I know it's been a long day, but we're off home now. It's a pity no one knows when it's your birthday, Jess. Never mind. We'll have a little party tonight. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. 